entire life uh, as a diplomat um, in different formats, I always wanted to find the key to the person whom I had to work with. Because the first step, if you are doing any kind of diplomacy, is to build trust. And how do you build trust? I mean, if you don't have trust coming from the other person, or if the other person doesn't feel the trust towards you, you are lost, in a way. And um, that kind of trust-building exercise, I think, is one of the main um, ingredients of uh, all kinds of diplomacies, different formats, but especially uh, in, in the soft power diplomacy. Of course, whenever we talk about soft power diplomacy, we, we start to talk about uh, Professor Nye from Harvard, because at the end of the 80s, he started this notion. Uh, he said, the best propaganda is not propaganda which is very true. The best propaganda is not propaganda. The moment it is propaganda, it is not powerful. For example, personally, when I set up the Hungarian Culture Center in 1999, I immediately moved somehow very far from the Hungarian embassy so that they would not think that it is a scenery of uh, state propaganda. Because the moment it is part of a scenery of state propaganda, it is not considered a, ser a serious and real cultural space. Uh, so, especially during the information age, uh, credibility, I think, I would say the scarcest uh, resource. And um, another word I like to use is seduction. I mean, you know, if you can seduce in a way your partner, all kinds of ways, um, it is always more effective than really a coercion. And of course, there are values in diplomacy like democracy, human rights, individual opportunities, which are deeply seductive. So diplomacy mainly focuses on how to get others to do your bindings, um, how to build trust, how to be understood. And I think that the first step is always you to look into the eyes of the other person, and then you can just hope that if you are honest and uh, forward-looking and, uh, and, um, and uh, strong enough, uh, then probably the other person will come to the point that the other person will start believing in you or trusting in you. And this is really always the first step. Of course, we diplomats have got different tasks, uh, representing uh, governments, uh, institutions, uh, international institutions. Or sometimes we just uh, have to do a lot of damage limitation as well. So we have to use all kinds of soft uh, uh, power for that as well. So um, another aspect of, uh, of soft power diplomacy, of course, is that I believe this is always a unique format of diplomacy because it builds long-term bridges between people. I remember the times of communism when I was brought up in Hungary. And our only hope was that we could go to the Goethe Institute or the Austrian Culture Institute or the British Council or the, or the American Embassy to watch movies and so on and so on. And through that kind of cultural exchanges and experiences, we just had thought uh, that there was another kind of life as well. So I, in, in my career, very often went to places where no one went to because it was politically not correct. I would say. But I believe that in cultural diplomacy, we talk about people. We talk about the connection of peoples, of cultures, of uh, continents, of civilization. And if you consider yourself um, a diplomat who, who, whose territory is the soft power diplomacy, culture diplomacy, you just have to connect with the people. And it doesn't matter under what kind of political regime they live, because uh, we, we, I personally, I believe, we had this very big hope coming from cultural institutions, for example, during these dark occupation times as well. But of course, um, when you want to do a successful diplomatic attempt, uh, you yourself have to be open. You have to believe in the real approachment of uh, cultures. Um, and. Um, uh, I would uh, suggest everybody doing soft power diplomacy, believing that 
that diversity is never a burden. Diversity should be really a source of information. Just think about opera again, just think about any culture. I mean, the beauty of it is that it's different, that it's inspiring, that you are open and learning, and you yourself can also give a lot. And I said it already, I think, um, on, on this platform uh, this week, that uh, this is a big strength of Hungarian culture as well, because Hungarian culture has been always, during the, 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 the history, at the same time an absorbing culture and an influencing culture, an inspiring culture. And we should never forget that, because this is it, what really defines our culture. And that is why it's possible that we can build bridges nearly with any other cultures. And that is why that in diplomacy I came across uh, in, in, in many moments in my life that I was the one who was able to build bridges or to intermediate or to um, connect other partners because through my culture I, interestingly enough, have this ability uh, to relate myself to uh, different parts of the world. And as I said this week, there, is, there was this uh, very influential Hungarian writer, Shando Marai, who said, um, don't forget, Hungarians, that uh, you have to look to the West, but don't forget that you came from the East. And this is, of course, an identity, a cultural identity matter, what we discussed this week already. Um, the big issue, of course, uh, for us, uh, how to communicate the political values and the policies as forms of power and to find a way um, of getting desired outcome. Now, if we speak really about um, soft power diplomacy, first we have to think how this notion came across. And of course, it started with hard power because hard power diplomacy has been uh, number one uh, for, for, uh, for centuries. Uh, but at the same time, as uh, one says, uh, the first resort of the kings was the soft power, because the way they connected the enemies, uh, the, the other countries, the other cultures, uh, with their um, uh, gifts, uh, with their cultural background, and so on, uh, has been always very influential. Um, so actually, the hard power, which is of course coercive, and today we here speak about sanctions, uh, financial restrictions, weapons, wars, and so on, uh, on the other hand, there is the soft power diplomacy, which of course um, uses the, 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 the process of co-opting the other person into the process of diplomacy. And um, uh, for, uh, for uh, I would say, um, one, two decades, we've been also talking about the importance of the smart power. And this is really a combination of the soft power and hard power. And in uh, the United Nations, I would say that that's the format uh, we've been using because the smart power is a, is a cleverly uh, cooked way of using really the, the coercive uh, hard power and, and the soft power. And um, um, we should not forget that when we talk about soft power diplomacy, it's not only cultural diplomacy. Today, there are a lot of versions <coughs> of that. There is the science diplomacy, the water do diplomacy, the sports diplomacy, the intellectual diplomacy. And I don't mind that actually we are broadening up this whole notion because uh, it is just an understanding that through this broadening up uh, and concentrating on different uh, topics through which we can get closer to each other, through which we can build bridges close, uh, easier, through that we can really build trust, is something um, uh, what helps uh, diplomacy uh, and, uh, and actually uh, politics. Um, and here is a very important topic, and that's education. I mean, everything starts with education. We know, I mean, if we talk about cultural diplomacy, it starts with education. The way we uh, educate our children uh, about different culture, this is uh, immediately number one, whether they are afraid of the other or whether they are inspired and interested. Uh, 
uh, this is already the, the starting point. And um, uh, another great uh, Hungarian, uh, American mind, sorry, uh, uh, Fulbright, who knows, because after all, everybody is Hungarian, <laughs> but George Mikas said, so if we go very much into that, probably we can find out. Anyway, so Fulbright said that in the long course of history, having people who understand your thought is much greater security than another submarine. And th that's it. So if, if they understand you, if they are not afraid of you, if they are listening uh, to you, if, if they can look into your eyes and not afraid, um, or at least they have a chance uh, to communicate openly or more openly, this is a much better security in the world than any or, or an, any, any numbers of submarines. And that is why this is so important that there are so many um, scholarship programs in the world. And actually, scholarship programs uh, uh, are one of the pillars of soft power diplomacy. Because through scholarships, actually, even uh, unconsciously, you are getting closer to the other culture, to the other countries, and for a whole life, you are taken. I mean, after the political changes, I felt free in my life the very first time because of the know-how fund scholarship by the British government. And I will never forget that, because that was the moment I found out what does it mean, for example, democracy in media through a government scholarship. And it happened to many of us in Eastern Europe. But that is why also that the Hungarian government uh, has been set up uh, throughout the history many types of Hungarian scholarship programs. And when I go to Vietnam, you know, you just find out nearly everybody speaks Hungarian in the government because somehow they were brought up here they when they came to university here so immediately you have a long link which really helps in diplomacy so the scholarship programs are very important i think in soft power diplomacy and i think this amazing institution this institute of uh, advanced studies has been using this format and the moment i come into uh, a cross with this uh, institution and the previous institution, which was a, 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 a for, uh, front, I would think, uh, for the Institute of Culture Diplomacy. It has been always, uh, it has been always characterized by the education diplomacy. It has been always characterized to, uh, on, on building bridges between people through scholarships, through thinking together, through working together. This is another topic, I think, which is very important in soft power diplomacy, especially if we speak about culture diplomacy. If we work together, again, using a musical uh, example, if you are in a quartet or a sextet or an octet, not to mention an orchestra, you have to work together with the other musician. Otherwise, there is never a musical piece which can be listened by everybody. So I think this is very important that, uh, that uh, in cultural diplomacy, we do things together. So for example, when I um, run uh, the Hungarian Culture Institute in London and the very uh, yeah, uh, successful Magyar Magic uh, uh, culture programs throughout the whole uh, Great Britain, it was successful because I used to work with more than 300 British organizations. That's why, not because I was so very fantastic, but because I was fantastic, because I knew that I had to work together with the British partners. And because you work in partnership, there comes a moment when they feel that they are part of the whole process. So they don't think whether it's Hungarian or British or French or, or uh, Italian or American, they just think that they are thinking together with you. And then the result will be a joint result. And that is exactly the same way that, for example, in Asian countries, soft diplomacy has been always very influential. Traveling together, eating together, cooking together, just think about the Chinese. Um, uh, uh, diplomacy. It has been always very influential because they have used these tools and through that they really managed to, to, to create a joint thinking, uh, acting, working projects. 
Uh, obviously, um, when I, I, I speak about uh, soft power diplomacy, I especially would like to, to mention uh, multilateral diplomacy because um, uh, I have often, I have been often said that, oh, but you know, in the United Nations, or you know, you don't use soft power, you know, that that's something different. But I don't really believe in that because um, in multilateral diplomacy, actually, which I would consider uh, is probably uh, very much like gardening, um, uh, uses a lot of tools which actually soft power diplomacy uses. Because what does it mean gardening? You know, uh, that, uh, that concept was actually um, um, uh, started out by George Schultz, who was an American economist and uh, politician. And when, uh, when he said uh, he came to the UN, and then he, you know, UN is uh, a, a kind of a bubble, don't really, people don't really understand what the UN is doing. And then and he said, of course, it is such a long term process. So like gardening, you know, you start to work with the soil, you know, you, you find your seeds, uh, then you watch the, the, the plants growing, and then you help the plants, and then, you know, you make uh, space for that, you water it, and so on. It is a long process, a lot of work. But then there will be a moment coming in your life when, when you can really see the flower, or when you can see the fruit. And this is exactly what multilateral diplomacy is. It's not like a business uh, deal. It, it, and, and if someone wants to have a, or see it as a business deal, it will never be successful. So you need to be patient patience, um, in uh, multilateral diplomacy as well in, in, in using the soft power, different tools in diplomacy. But for that, you need diplomats who know what they are doing. And uh, I, uh, I always would like to say that different types of diplomacy uh, uh, mean, means and uh, needs uh, different uh, uh, types of diplomats. Um, because we know that uh, the world is full of diplomacies and diplomats, and of course the classic diplomat in foreign office uh, comes from an uh, academic background, from politics, international relations, languages, economics, uh, humanities, but understanding emotions, human behavior, uh, yeah, I know how many minutes I have, okay, as an important skill. So understanding emotions and human behavior. And this is very important, and that's why I think that psychology and soft power diplomacy and diplomacy as such is very strongly related. We are working on that actually at Columbia University with the psychoanalyst um, because uh, she's interested in, uh, in, uh, in diplomacy and I'm interested in psychology, so we are sort of exploring the different ways how we can strengthen uh, the knowledge coming from psycho psychology and diplomacy um, uh, when, when, we, when we really um, would like to motivate, when we really want to get done something, when, when we have, of course, uh, uh, a tool and for, for a target. So when you are a diplomat, um, where, whether you are in the UN or whether you are in Skopje or Albania or, or Germany or the US, we will talk about that. Um, today, you use different formats of communication. You use WhatsApp, you use uh, Zoom, hello <laughs> Zoom everybody, you use uh, Teams, whatever. Facebook. This is very important to understand that today, diplomacy, uh, all types of the new tools of diplomacy are as important as the behind closed door diplomacy, uh, town hall diplomacy, uh, private meeting diplomacy, because this is really how you are introducing, connecting, preparing, even sometimes making deals. So I think you should never forget that um, that the role of uh, modern diplomats are very strongly uh, uh, in introduced and influenced by the knowledge of psychology, understanding the other person, 
and also knowing how to use the modern tools, technology. So we, I would say that we, in a way we have to be, be prepared uh, to, to understand what is going on in Silicon Valley because we also have to understand how the, the, the new media is moving on so that we could use also these tools. Um, as you know, who, you, who know me, I could talk about that for days, but I think <laughs> I will stop here because I just really wanted to, uh, to, to start thinking together with you.